all the big calls on all the big races. Welcome along. It's another Friday feeling here on Water Shout, the Racing Post flagship weekend show. Brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365, Dave Orton. Thrilled to be back in the seat with you somewhere in the capital. We're good to go. Don't forget, this is an interactive show. Get your comments down below if you're watching on YouTube. Like and subscribe. That's what it's all about. We're going to be giving you all the big previews from all the big tipsters coming out there. What a big panel I've got for you coming up as well. We've got a great guest as well. Red hot guest coming up for you as well. All of a sudden, the jumps game is back in action. If you want to get involved on Twitter, hashtag what a shout. Let's get down the panel. The bear is back. Now, yep. you must have been over the moon last weekend. I, I was with you the week before. You were doom and gloom. The world was over. Wobble your head, man. Seven days later, the big two came out and didn't they deliver? Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Um, Constitution Hill is just as good as we thought he is, if not better. Yeah, you got a bit of we answer this one. You got a bit of stick, didn't you? I mean, they, they like to give you a bit of stick, don't they? Do they? They, they do a tad. I know you've come off social media, but uh, the rest of us enjoy reading it. Um, but... You basically said, didn't you, before he ran or before he was going to run at Ascot, theoretically he's going to be a better horse on ratings than Mr. Brack. Whoa, everyone went mental. And now some of the greatest judges out there are saying this is the best hurdle I've ever seen. Yeah, well, he's only run four times, hasn't he? Which is remarkable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, Isterbrecht was a great, great hurdler, but he was known nowhere near as good as Constitution Hill after four runs, was he? So if you chart their courses, obviously they're taking different... Don't you, Different eras, aren't they? Isterbrecht used to run a lot more than Constitution Hill would do now. He also came from the flat, didn't he? So. Yeah, so, but, but if you chart their courses, Constitution Hill yeah. is on course to be a better hurdler. Is he going to beat the rating? Yeah, I think yeah, he'll be. I mean, this is a guy that talks to our handicapper, you know, the best in the business. Because Steve the Mason's thing is, is there's horses around as well who you can rate the races around that will give him that rating, isn't yeah. there? Like, if he thrashes Honeysuckle, giving her £7, then... The rating's going to explode, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. And Pat Cooney from our sponsors, I'm thrilled to say, makes the journey down from Stoke. Pat, great to have you. Thank you. And mm. where were you last weekend? I was at Newbury, but it was interesting um, when Constitution Hill's race was on. Everyone was just glued to the uh, the giant screen, and there was a collective wow went up. And then when you dissect the race, you're thinking, well, that looked too good to be true, really. Then you look, well, what time did he do? That's always going to be the best place to start. The time was incredible. He was the only mm. horse that went understand and on that card that day. I must admit, my eyebrows margin. started moving yeah, more and then, than normal. Yeah, and then like that, you are. then you start thinking, well, it's a bit too early to judge him. And then you're thinking, well, how are you going to beat him? You know, could, would, would Ishtabrak have come from behind and beaten him on what we saw at Newcastle? Just the four runs thus far. That being said, Fasil Vega makes his early debut on uh, on Saturday, and maybe we'll be having the same conversation in twelve months' time. But, yeah, we're uh, a bit blessed at the moment, aren't we? And of course, uh, Long Press came out and did what we hoped we'd see him do in the rehearsal chase. Good horses running in handicaps. He was supposed to do it at Ascot in a graded race. They went to handicap company and wasn't he good? And I bet you fancy him for the Gold Cup. Yeah, he is a good horse, isn't he, Long Press? Um, I, I think he does want cutting the ground to be his very, very best, but. He, he jumps so well. He's very un uncomplicated sort of horse, isn't he? He travels through his race nicely and stays very well, which is what you need to run a big race in a Gold Cup. And at this stage, how can he possibly be like for three or four times the price of a Galopin de Champ? How does that work? It would be lovely, He's a better horse than Galopin de Champ now, is he? To see second season novices. Well, he is at the moment. He right is. Now. There's no doubting mm. it. The potential of Galopin de Champ, what we would have seen if he'd have stood up in the Turners, uh, but then Bob Ollinger, no, no, no. anyway, so look, it's yeah. all to play for, isn't it? Don't talk about Bob Ollinger. All right, no, no I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to wind you up too much. Uh, but listen, after the, the horror, you know, the Anis Horribus or the Saturday Horribus, whatever you want to call it, that's got a week later, we're back. Everyone, even at Newbury on Saturday, the jumps ground is fine. Lots to talk about that in a week about Sandown. It's all going to be good, isn't it? We've got John Bond coming out to play, of course. We've got Shishkin coming back. It's the beach at Fences. We've got a Sunday, a Royal Bond Sunday, haven't we? It's marvellous what's going all of a yeah, sudden. And, and all the dreams are on the table, aren't they? These big guns are coming out and we're thinking, well, I suppose, I suppose they'll win, but they still have to go out and do it. So there are exciting times ahead for us. Absolutely. If you want to know anything anti-post, we'll give you all the markets of Bet365 for the big races. Let's have a look what exactly is coming up on this week's show. We've got three races for you on Saturday, the biggies. And then we've got to go for a Sunday special, haven't we? Because at Fairy House, the Queen, the Honeysuckle, it's her chance to come back and answer Constitution Hill. In the middle of that, we'll have a man that rode against the monster in the fighting fifth. Johnny Burke, is there a hotter jockey anywhere on Saturdays at the moment than Johnny? He joins us for an interview as well before those all-important weekend winners. 
Right, thrilled to say we can go somewhere down in the Devonshire countryside because on his way to Exeter, Johnny Burke, a red-hot jockey this season, as I promise you, joins us on the line. Johnny, your what a shout debut. This is the pinnacle of your career, surely? Absolutely, yeah, definitely, no doubt. He's a right character, is Johnny. I've got uh, Mr Graham Robway with me and Pat Cooney from our sponsors Bet365 as well. And I reckon that once he finally hangs up his boots, it'll be a sad day for you, Johnny, but we can offer you a job in this studio because you, you, you've got a little bit of history, haven't you? I do, yeah. I've got a little retirement plan brewing, yeah. Oh, listen, happy days. If you need an agent, it's not Robway. You're my man. You're my man. <laughs> Absolutely. Johnny, honestly, let's get serious now. Uh, you've, been around, look, you've been around, you know, in the saddle, Johnny, for a long time, but you've recently just had your first treble, uh, I saw the headline. This season couldn't be going much better for you, could it? No, no, it's just things are starting to happen, um... I suppose you kind of go through the summer months wondering where the rides are going to come from and once kind of October starts, it starts clicking into gear. But God, the, the, the last month, I couldn't have dreamt for it to go any better, really. Yeah, Paddy Power Gold Cup, of course, in the bag and a massive weekend coming up. Uh, Pat, you were musing to me and we were looking at, at his biggest prize is one, Johnny, and we'll get them up on the screen in a second. But you found a very interesting ride from 2015. Yeah, Johnny, a, a huge fan. I loved the ride you gave Garlaw, but I was looking at some of your big race winners, and it, I go back to Apple's Jade for Gordon Elliott. And what, what kind of a horse was she to ride? Yeah, um, Willie actually trained her at the time. Um, oh, okay. When Willie had her, so um, that was massive to get the uh, spin on her. I, I actually started out in Willie's really. Um, through Davy Cannon and Paul Townend, and I was lucky enough to get the call up that day. I think Brian Cooper had gone to Kempton to ride Don Cossack. He was retained ready to get us at the time. So uh, she kind of went, she was 25 to 1, I think, but w w Willie was fairly sweet on her. And, uh, he said, ride her as if she had a chance. So lucky enough, I did, and she won, so it was great. I mean, rider as if he has a. I mean, every Willie had horse has a chance, doesn't it? Let's. So that was a that was a great one. Let's have a look at some of your big prizes. One then you won't be able to see these on the screen, Johnny, but our, our viewers will. Galway Plate then in 2015. Paddy Power Gold Cup as mentioned this season. Uh, Betfair Trophy, of course, you won that on Not So Sleepy. Boot Hill who runs this weekend. Magol Novice Chase, the Desert Orchid Chase, the Midland Grand National on the Great Gooniella, of course. It's all there, isn't it? Now Robway's with me. He's doing these power rankings. Kings, as you can see, probably it's been much of the talk of the uh, racing industry, and not so sleepy is is fair to say has caused a bit of controversy. But you've always believed in us. Well, I, I love Sleepy. What's wrong with Sleepy? He's such a character, but he's such a talented character, isn't he? I mean, I had him at number five in my power rankings, and everyone went nuts and said, "How can you not have? How can you have not so sleepy so high?" But I think he's really talented. Johnny, hey, what do you reckon, Johnny? He's a great horse, isn't he, Sleepy? He is. Like, when he turns up in a day, he's very, very good. Um, when he doesn't turn up, he's very, very bad. But, uh, <laughs> but like, if you go back to his record, like, on the flat and over jumps, he's probably a top-class dual-purpose horse, and you don't really see that that often. So, um, I suppose that's why he probably captures people's imagination, too. But he is a bit quirky with it, so... Well, absolutely. And let's stick with him, if you don't mind, Johnny, because last week you made the trip up to the toon to ride in what they're calling the fighting fit of the ages. Now, we were all expecting Sleepy, of course, to dead eat it in it last year with Epitont to maybe go off in front. We know that, you know, Team Henderson thought we don't want to get messed about. We're going to lead on Constitution Hill. First question, did you ever think about leading? Because you certainly didn't in the race. And whether he quite enjoyed it or not, I'm not sure. He's ended up running his race, potentially, has he? And have we seen the greatest hurdler of all time? Um, I suppose the first question, I, I didn't really think about making running because he's quirky and the hurdles have changed to white. And I wasn't sure what he was going to do at the first if I did go down to the first on my own, uh, knowing his track record a couple of years back. Um, so th that was probably my first thing. I was always going to take a lead over the first couple, but if he did happen to run off of me, then I was happy to let him. But look, Constitution Hill is very, very good. And I thought if I let my lad roll, I would have jeopardised my chance of finishing third, really. Um, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to obviously obtain my best finishing position. And I think with the way I rode him on the day, we did that. I think he ran to form. If the ground was softer, he might have closed down ep Epitant more just like last year, um, but the times were right. Like They were very, very strong. I think Sleepy ran two seconds faster than last year, and the mayor ran three. So that will tell you how good Constitution Hill is, really. 
And what about the buzz coming back in about him then, uh, Johnny? Like this week, obviously, you know, the superlatives are coming. We don't even know where to dig out the superlatives at the minute, just how good he can be. Do you think it's us getting a little bit excited or is it warranted? I think it's warranted. Like, like the sport needs horses like Constitution Hill. Um, I would just say, don't forget about the mayor. She's been there and done it. And, and she is the benchmark now that he has to rise there. Um, and hopefully we'll get to see that. May even get to see it before Cheltenham. Um, but one thing about Constitution Hill, I just love his temperament and the way he goes about stuff. Like there was plenty going on on Saturday. It was a big crowd. There a lot of jeering, but he just took it all in his stride. Very relaxed and chilled out. And it was my first time riding against him. And I was very taken with him and how he behaved at the at the start. Even he was so relaxed and chilled. For 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 a top class two mile horse, you don't really usually see him to be so chilled out. Oh, fascinating stuff, Johnny, and that was worth the interview alone. Mm. I can tell you, our viewers will absolutely love that from a guy that rode in the race. Let, shall we turn our attention to Sandown tomorrow then, Johnny? You start off in the 12.35 Whiskey Express, who was running on on a seasonal return at Exeter last time. Yeah, ran a nice race. Um, she, she did hang quite bad to the left, and ideally she'd be better going left-handed, but Sandown, you have plenty of time, and um, sometimes you do come up probably the middle to stand rail when you're out finishing, so... If she doesn't hang as jump as badly left um, as she did the first day, she goes there with a very strong chance. Uh, it was a messy race and it was competitive and it got very crowded turning in, but once it did open up, she flew. So it shouldn't be as messy tomorrow. It should be a clearer passage through. So, um, And I think the strong, the stick in it will, will uh, suit her. So, um, and, and she handles soft, soft ground. So. We associate you and Harry Fry and Mayors at Sandown, that's for sure. In particular, we're going to get to that down the line. Uh, you've also got Midnight Reflection in the Potemps, pulled up last time, but like any cut under foot, not badly handicapped on best form. No, not badly handicapped. Um, she's a tough mare. I rode her as a novice, I think. I haven't ridden her for a long time, um, but I'm sure Ben will be expecting a good good run. Um, but obviously, she has to bounce, bounce back, back to farm. <clears throat> OK, grade one action now. Your chance to snare one of them, Johnny. And uh, you ride Bootle, of course. Now, we talked about you coming up against Constitution Hill. Are we, gonna, are we thinking we're doing the same thing here with John Bon again? Hit a big figure when he slammed Mon Morale at, at Warwick on his return. But Bootle's, I mean, he is really going forward, isn't he, over fences? Uh, you've got a sort of no-pressure ride in a grade one almost. Yeah, pretty much. Like, um, I suppose I'm going to have a target on John Bon's back. Um and that just might suit. Look, Jamban's very, very good. Um, you couldn't fault in anything he did in Warwick, and Warwick is a decent test of a jumper. So um, that would have been a good test for him going to Sandown, uh, especially with those line defences down down the back straight. But my lad's coped well. Uh, he won very well in Ascot the last day. We always believed him to be a great at horse, but through one thing or another with injuries, things went wrong for him. So he seems to be back on an upward curve, and... Look, it's going to be a tired ass to beat Dunban, but if we can give him a fright to be enough. All right, OK. Yeah, he's, he's certainly a you know, really, really classy horse, and I'm glad to see he's got it together. I loved him at Ascot last time. Uh, now, uh, this perhaps might be the, the pearl that you've got tomorrow, because everyone loves a British Ch uh, Cheltenham Festival winner. And of course, Love Envoy did just that in the mayor. She comes back tomorrow, Johnny. How is she, first and foremost? Yeah, very good. Um, Harry's very happy with her. Actually, would you believe I, I only sat in her for my first time ever on the gallops about six weeks ago. Uh, all last season, I never rode her out. Um, for one reason or another, it just didn't happen. But uh, I obviously didn't didn't need to. She, she wouldn't really give you much of a feel on the gallops. Um, you wouldn't believe the races she won if you were to ride her out in the gallops. Um, so that's a good thing. She saves her best for the track. But um, Harry's happy with her. She's obviously won, won round sand and she likes it there. Um, and we think she's nicely handicapped too. You know, with the races she's won, you wouldn't you wouldn't be surprised if she didn't won one fifty. So she's off one thirty nine. So like you'd like to think she's she's nicely in. Good horses in a handicap is what we want to see, Rodgers. Yeah, I, I love this horse, Love Envoy. One of my favourite horses last season. He's very strong. Just one question that I had for Johnny on Love Envoy is that I read the Harry Fry Racing Post Stable Tour and he said that she just had a little bit of a setback coming in and it's just taking her a little bit longer uh, to, to get her ready. So I just wondered, in terms of fitness, well, what are we looking at? Are we looking at 90% here, Johnny, or do you think we're going to be bang ready to go first time? Yeah, well, well she, she obviously won't be bang ready to go first time because Harry's never are and you're always looking to march. But um, the way I'd put it, she'd be fit enough to do herself justice. And uh, 
that to be good enough. She had a setback, but hasn't really had her up. Like, you probably would have ran her two weeks ago if the ground allowed, but she, she is best on soft ground. So um, there was a mayor's handicap option next week in Cheltenham, but again, with the dry forecast, it just might be dry there. So she's ready ready to go for tomorrow. Uh, the ground is right, and uh, she she's definitely well enough to do herself justice if, if, if they fall right for her. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, she's going to be a pivotal horse for a lot of people this weekend. We wish you well on that. All right. I said that you've got a, a sort of a free hit in a grade one. Of course, uh, less pressure on Dunvegan, of course, in the Tingle Creek. We're hoping that Edward Stone turns up. We're hoping that Shishkin turns up. This lad's an interesting runner, I suppose, with a fire yard coming over. Of course he is. Yeah, like he's, he's, he's battled hard and he's running a lot of decent races. Um, and the one race I pick out was when he was second to Shackham for so, um in Leperstown. So... Like, although he's the outsider, wouldn't be surprised if he ran into a play. Um, if for whatever reason the main the main protagonist didn't turn up, you know, so like it's a race at the end of the day. So he's there. He's, I'm, I'm sure Pat wouldn't be bringing him over just to fill up the numbers, really. All right, there we are. There your Saturday rise, Johnny. Again, uh, red hot form. I'm sure one of them will go in for you, if not the lot. But let's go to Huntingdon, please, if you don't mind, before we let you go, because we've got the what, what I might say is uh, a real tongue wagging mare. She's two from two. We saw her at the open meeting on her return, an emotional winner for the Sherwoods. Queen's Gamble, who really looked the real deal. She comes out again in a bumper, listed company at Huntingdon Sunday. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, there's not much I can say about her. She's just special. Um, I suppose in the back of winning an A for your, I was worried was that a fluke, and uh, like to see her back it up, and and she Julie Julie did. Um, she she's just something special. She doesn't know she's as good as she is. She's very relaxed. And, uh, I've never ridden one to go through a race as easy as her, and when you ask her to quicken, she re really really does. So it's a different track, but um. Look, her farm is good and, and visually she looks very, very good. So looking forward to her. Tis the season to be jolly, Johnny Burke. And you've just <laughs> got the feeling you've got a real Christmas cracker arise this weekend. Johnny, it's been an absolute pleasure. The guys as well. Hopefully this won't be the last... I know it won't be the last time we see you in this studio. Johnny, all the best today and beyond for the rest of the season, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Johnny Burke, what an absolute pleasure that was. OK. The moment a lot of you will have been waiting for. No, it's not the laps. It's the Saturday previews. Three on Saturday, then spread around the houses. This is a great weekend, isn't it? Tingle Creek weekend. But we've got to go up to Aintree. The national fences will be in operation. And the many clouds chase has caught the imagination of a lot. Protector out, of course, Pat won it last year. We all saw what he's come out and done recently. That was a demolition job. We've got a favourite that suggests we might see another one. Yeah, Ahoy Senor is going to be favourite for the race. But it's interesting. There's, a, there's just the six runners. And at the adjusted weights, there's only four pounds between them all. And when I got the, the entries of the five data, I thought, oh, this is a Hoy Senor's race to lose. He's got, you know, forget what happened at Weatherby. I spoke to Peter Skudem after Weatherby, and he just said the horse just got going too quickly. You know, he, just, he was just doing too much in front. So no doubt they'll have worked hard on that. And I don't, it probably might be aiming up making the running, but it'll be on his own terms this time around rather than be lit up. And the more I thought about it, I just thought, yeah, he is just the likely winner of this race. We know he's good round Aintree both hurdles and over fences. And it was more by elimination than other things. Chantry House, you don't quite know what you're going to get with him. First, he's had a wind up since he last ran, but he has got the penalties. So that's the unknown with him. Noble Yates, I, I, I'm surprised they're campaigning him like this because I thought after he won the national last year, I thought it'd just go hurdle, hurdle, hurdle. And then to make He'd be a fitting nod to the title of the race, wouldn't it? Because many yes. towns, of course, used to come out after you know he'd run in the national yeah. and, and run in this. And to, you yeah. Know, so yeah, you, you have to take Noble Yates seriously. But the more I thought about, it, I just thought oh, Hoyson, you know, he, he is the best horse in the race and on official rating. So I'll give him a pass for what happened at Weatherby that day. Um, and I like the Aintree version of a Hoy Senor, and I, I suppose he can get back on track here. Well, we had Lucinda on the show, didn't we, last weekend? You were talking about Corrick Rambler, amongst others. Uh, it, but by the way, what sort of a national trial was that he ran in the Coral Gold Cup behind Lou Milos? Yeah, That's problem, the winner, isn't it? The problem is, Dave, is he gets behind in these races, doesn't he? And that this is, is a one big for problem. Arthur did the same, don't worry about he's it. He's a late run on monkey. He's, got, he's a late <laughs> run on monkey, and he's got an extra mile. I, I'm, I, I was you're, amazed. You're, you're that falling he wasn't for a late run on monkey. I've got it. I'm, I'm monkeyed up to the eyeballs <laughs> in him. 
He's a bit of a monkey as well. But what she didn't she nail him, by the way, Lucinda Russell? She said everything she said to us was right. He'll be looking at the ambulances. He'll be making a few funny shapes over the early fences. And I was watching the race live in here, and I'm thinking, she absolutely nailed him. And then he just got going that bit too late on a track where they can get the run on you, can't they? Anyway, there's your national winner, people. What price was he afterwards? About three to five. Curveball, come on. He's about 25 to one, but he was, I'll take the, it. He was the eye catch. And of course, if he jumps the last fence at Aintree, within eight lengths of whatever's in front. Within 80 lengths. You'd be lucky to be that close. <laughs> Hang on, don't be so ridiculous. Right, well, Laminos isn't going to go and beat him in the national. He will reverse that form. It, it looks like it's very good form. Good to see the ultimate form coming up. All right, that's that done. We've also got John Bond running on Saturday. Should we have a quick mention about him before we go back to this? Does he just win? I think he'll win. Yeah, he was very impressive, wasn't he, at uh, Warwick when he won first he, what time What do you think he'll win? He's three's on, man, isn't he? He's three on. Um, he looked pretty good, didn't he? And I think we're in that scenario with him. People don't really want to run against him. That's how good the yeah. people in the game think he yeah. could be. Yeah, so, we'll get to that. Some, yeah. of the, some of the Irish horses have obviously stayed in what looks like a mouth-watering dream. Ducking and shows. diving. Ducking and diving. People don't want to run against him. That's wow. remarkable, isn't it? I know, apparently they are. <laughs> you're <laughs> quite really? right to bring that up. Of course, in the week, Gordon Elliott said the reason why the British aren't doing so well is because they duck and dive against each other. Paul Nichols came out and said bleep 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 yeah. and because you wouldn't want I mean Nichols does anything but that doesn't he but that was a great story in the week come on this jump season's alive now isn't yeah. it bit of ag from the trainers as well the Irish English you know the Anglo Irish thing's alive going back to this many clouds Jay, so we, we're expecting John Bond to not get booted up the hill by Harry Freisels but you are a forgiving man I am, yeah. I, th I think a Hoysenor. Well, the more I get to know you, I know you're a forgiving man. <laughs> I am. And you're going to tip a Hoysenor. Yeah, I think he'll win. Yeah, um, he's, he's just... The problem with him is that he, he can throw in the odd bad run, as we saw at Weatherby, didn't we? He was yeah. really, really disappointed at Weatherby. But he pulled very hard that day. He's mm. very strong in the market, I'm though. not a forgiving man here. What, you don't like him? I actually wasn't with him in the Charlie Hall. I do like him as an individual. I'd love to see him bounce back. And I know he's the king of Aintree at the moment, isn't he? Every yes. time he yep. turns up, Aintree does it. However, it was a stinker. And again, it wasn't. Spoke, it wasn't. It was a stinker. stinker. It wasn't. They, the, she called him an idiot, Lucinda Russell, on the show. No, I'm, I'm a bit, oh, that's a bit strong, Lucinda. She, <laughs> like, like, she likened him to being just an idiotic kid. Yes. And what she did say to me, I thought we said this on the show, or maybe when I was warming her up and we were just chatting just before we were about to go on, she said he didn't like being taken on. Now, there are horses in here that might just come and have a little eyeball of him. That's why I'm going to give Sounds Russian a chance. Oh, he really looked like a horse that was going places at Kelso last time. The Dusart form is still in the bag. I still expect that Air Force to be good. This is a good horse. We know we're patiently, waiting patiently, she can do it. I think if he's going to have a day in the sun or in the mud, this will be it. Sounds Russian for me. No. Mm, all right. Okay, anyway, talking about be, being forgiving, we're going to need to do that in the Tingle Creek, aren't we? Uh, at the moment, they all stand their ground. Now, Edward Stone, poor old Eddie, last year's Arkel winner, we've been expecting to see him the last couple of weeks. Please, Kingy, run him on this ground. Um, and, of course, we've got Shishkin coming back, and we've got last year's hero of the race, Grenatine, to name but a few. Pat Cooney, how's the betting gone in the week? Well, it was, it was a bit lopsided on Monday because we all put uh, Grenatine in as favourite because we know he's going to run. And the, but I think everyone was working on the basis, yeah, but if Shishkin runs, he's bound to be favourite. It's been lively then. Yeah. yeah, so it's been an interesting market. Um, and Edward Stone... You know, you look on official ratings, he's 161, Greenatine 171 and Shishkin 176. I thought he was rated higher than that. And then I was going through Edward Stone's form and I was thinking, well, where is the, the great run? You know, he's got a lot to do for me and it's going to be his first run this year. The market's settling down a bit. I think Shishkin is, is sure to go off a of favourite. But if you're asking to back a horse at, say, five to four or less, you want to have seen its last run in a good light, wouldn't you? And his last run was just a mystery. We've not seen him since. I couldn't be backing him at his price, uh, but connections do seem happy about him, and he wouldn't be turning up if they weren't. The safer option has got to be to back Greener team, though, hasn't it? So, the question is, and I think that's what a lot of punters will be asking themselves, let's get some help as to whether we should really be considering this as a wealth warning with Shishkin, or a gift. Of course, if you'd have said pre arkle you know, looking forward, what price would he be when we know he's going to return Tingle Creek? You'd be expecting it to be a John Bond type price. Of course, we don't know. They were making up excuses that we'd never heard of before. You hate excuses, but yet there's something festive about you this weekend, isn't there? You are, you are like, I don't know, Scrooge coming out of that horrible dream. No, Maybe you... 2023 could be your year because you're tipping. It's a great time of year and, and Shishkin is a great horse, isn't he? Um, yeah, he's got one poor run on his, on his record, but like one poor run. 
the rest of them are all outstanding. And I don't get this argument that he's suddenly gone after one. Like he was beaten after two fences or something at Cheltenham. I I know that Henderson said the ground, but I think that he had a really hard race he did. that day. There's it worked, no doubt in it. An, he had a mother and a father race. Yeah, I mean, so the question is, can he come back? You expect? I mean, if he does come back, then this is all over, isn't it? If he comes back, he's all over. He's different gravy to this lot. And this is from the man that said one of the bets of the season was Grenadine in the race last year. I mean, they were carrying you and Keely out on your shoulders, weren't they, at the Tingle Creek meeting last year? They were. Are you going, by the way? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm tempted to go, but it, it's a very busy week next week, Dave. You know, so uh, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm going to be able to stand too many days out. You know, I'm, I'm getting on there. Andrew and so... Cooper and Sandown now worrying that the ticket sales won't be what they should be. <laughs> um, but. Um, yeah, it's a great race anyway. I mean, the worry with Shishkin is it's really... It, it could be really good ground, couldn't it? Um, it's not going to be good ground. I mean, well, I, know, you, I know it's a sort of drying forecast, but Andrew knows what he's doing, doesn't he? And on the flat, I don't for know, example, on the chase always, course, I think it'll be fine. No, I think it'll be Come good on, ground. we're in December now, man. It's easy underfoot. We spoke to Matty Batchelor, who came into the studio on Saturday after being at the course on Friday. And a lot of people on some shows we were doing were saying, God, quick ground underfoot, you know, kills and Tom Single. Course records, and he said all the jocks said it was really quite a kind surface. And that played out so, despite no rain on the Saturday as well. Hendo knows he's got to run Shishkin here. Otherwise, you're running out of options. Well, really. if, if you go if, to Kempton, maybe again on Boxing Day. But they want to get him in. If My the worry ground about is him, as you say it's going to be, yeah. then Shishkin will definitely win. He definitely runs. And he'll, you think and he'll, he'll win. definitely win. He beats Edward Stone, doesn't he, I think? The worry for me is if the ground is good, proper good ground, then he's got proper good ground horses against him, hasn't he? He's got um, Green Team, loves good ground. Loves it. Gentleman mm -hmm. de May, loves good ground. The Horden Gold Cup was a yeah. much better greener team than we saw in the race last year. So if sure. you think he was prepping in that, but for my money, that race terribly fell apart. And yeah, it did. I don't really think that that was Dolos's day. I know Kiel's napped him on this show, Pat, do you remember? Of course, yeah. And he, Dolos ran a blinder. Of all the bets all that weekend, Kiel's napped him. But I just think he had to beat his stone, mate. I, I, I think gr the Grenadine is rock solid. But if Edward Stone turns up, it'll be fascinating to see what he's got. C could he step up and trip this year? Edward Stone's a better horse than Grenadine. You think so? Yeah. But whether oh, he's a better a horse at Sandown is another question. Because Green Team's very good at Sandown, but if if you know on their best performances, Edward Stone is a better horse than Green Team. I think so, gentleman Demay. I think. Yeah, I think you'll know your fate early with Shiskin. Once they go off and run, and he pops over the first two or three fences, if all systems are going, and you think, oh, he's enjoying it, he's settled, he's jumping. Yeah. This is the old version of Shiskin. I, I could see the in running action being pretty strong on this because people might say at halfway, this is all over. Well, absolutely, because he just didn't raise a leg, really, at Cheltenham, no. did he? So, yeah, There's a right. few people who are arguing as well that, that, that at times, over two miles, he's looked a little bit slow. Like yeah, it, including on his return, although he slammed his rivals on his return mm. last year. Almost just, as though he wants to step up Remember, three trip. out Nico at Kempton over Christmas was just getting into him, wasn't he? Yeah. And then the turbo kicked it's in. It's a little bit like Altior, the old Altior, when mm. he used to hit like massive flat spot and then he'd fly home. Yeah. Shiskin's starting to show signs of that towards the end of his last when, few races. Well, they were talking about at the start of his career as if he might be a gold cup horse. And the vibes I'm getting from Seven Barrows is this is obviously our two minor, but we are not... All of a sudden last year they weren't hearing of it. Now mm. I think they are. Because of what happened at Cheltenham, they're thinking, mm, mm. interesting. Does that make an Ergamine a good thing for the champion chase? I don't, it's all fascinating, isn't it? Right, so two for Shishkin, one for... I, I think you play the safer option. You know what you're going to get with Greener team. Are you going tomorrow? I'm going to Aintree, actually. Are you? Ah, and shall we return yeah. to Liverpool now? Because <laughs> let's have some fun. Let's go over the beach of fences. One of the highlights for me of the whole jump season last year was seeing that magnificent grey snow leopardess absolutely show what it's all about there. Last year's second Hill 16 rear poses, but where's the betting gone? Anti-pose so far. Well, the market, mo both of those two are respected, snow leopardess and Hill 16. They're <coughs> going to be around about 10 or 11. And they served up an absolute thriller last year. You know, the weather was... Like, I was there last year. It was horrendous weather. Um, so they're going to they're gonna be uh, forces to be reckoned with. The market is pretty much focused on two, really. Uh, Ashtown Lad of Dan Skelton. Nothing wrong with putting a Dan Skelton horse in as a market leader these days in any race. And, mm. it, you know, he's got a lot to like. But uh, Jess Kiel of uh, Oliver Greenwell and Josh Guerrero, that's probably favourite to be favourite. It did everything but win over the national fences uh, last time, over a shorter trip, albeit. Um, he is a six-year-old, but he hopped around there like a bunny rabbit last year. I pretty much like everything about him other than his price, really, but it was, it was such a big run. They're the two for money at the top of the market. You can throw in Captain Kangaroo or Willie Mullins, Cork National winner. That's attracted a bit of support. 
So it depends how you want to play it. You've certainly got two dominant runners ahead in the market and they've got perfectly viable claims. Or do you want to play the each way angle first five, first six places and scratch below the surface and go for bigger prices? My eye was drawn to five star getaway. Simply because Christian Willis has got such a good record with stay in chases, Potter's Corner, Win My Wings, Kitty's Light, etc. And I, I could see him being the right type for the races at the right end of the handicap. Slight worry with Christian's horses, they don't seem in form at the moment. Well, he's just turned 40, he's become an old man like the rest of us. Yeah. And I was going to say, if he doesn't have a big Saturday winner soon, we will be getting the grey hairs. <laughs> yeah. He probably dies it, doesn't he, knowing Chris? Um, so, but it's Christian Williams, you know, he, he's going to come good at some point. Uh, I just wish his stable were in a little bit better form than so, he is at the moment. But I would appeal, he appeals around about 14, but if you're a Jess Keel backer, then I... I I, I couldn't give you too many reasons not to be excited about your back. I'll tell you what, so many horses in this, I'm just looking forward to seeing what they're going to do over the national fences. This is a race where, again, you're seeing the ball big. Now, the Grand Sefton um, and Beecher double, since they played around with the dates, has become doable, hasn't it? Mm. You think that it's going to be a nearly double. Nearly double. Yeah, he nearly won the Grand Sefton. Jess Keel, didn't he? he? He definitely had a think about that. No. He 100% <laughs> had a think about it. I saw you tipped him and I thought, lazy. No, you think he's a thinker? He's an absolute no thinker. No he was, no he way. went on the exchanges, I wonder, on that run, and he must have gone no. really low. That's nonsense. Not much love for a six year old, two miles five beating the nose. Over I'll the tell you what, he, he should have won that. What, you think he was thinking about, oh, I'll just get beaten nose? Yeah. He, he, he definitely he came nonsense. there cruising. And the pain barrier up was there, and I'm listen. He goes over further now. I can, look, he's going to wing his way through. He stays but, further. But lo, like you, right at the race course, like you, when I'm out with you on a night, when it comes to the business end, you wobble. <laughs> <laughs> he stays further. He definitely improved for the step up in trip. We know he goes um, around the track. We know he goes on the ground. He jumps the fences fine. What's not to like about him? He's more likely race than most of them. He's a ridiculous price for a horse no, that should not. have won the Grand Sefton. How hard how race did he have there? What well, do don't you know. think Percussion can beat him? Who? Percussion, the one that finished third in the Sefton. Percussion? Percussion, <laughs> that's what it's called. I was thinking, sounds Russian. But uh, no, percussion's not good enough. I don't think Ashdown Lad is it. I don't think um, yep. Dan's, that's the Dan Skelton factor. Yep. Again, the excellent Kevin Morley. Check that in your members club tonight at six o'clock. If you're watching on Friday, if you're picking up a paper on the Saturday, check it out. This is a huge trends race, of course. And uh, no, he's, you've got to have won a class one or a two race. He's, he just hasn't quite got that in his armory, I don't think. I think there are classier, better handicapped horses, back class. I think that, uh, that kills his shout. Darasha Counter. Yeah, I think he's like, interesting at the top. Chance, yes. I think he's been trained for this, mm. and he came back uh, behind Ramsey's in that. Very good. Yeah, although she, veterans. she did say in her racing post stable tour that, that the Rash counter was as fit as she could get him first time out. Mm. Now, whether that means like he's absolutely bang, he on wouldn't have been a bat number if he'd have run in the Cold Gold Cup, you know, which of course he's got, yeah, you know, history with. Uh, he's interesting, but I'm going to take a chance here, and it's a project for me. And I'm hoping that he lasts a little bit better than he did in the Grand National Fortescue, Hugh Nugent. He has got that if you look at that Haydock form. That he's got he's mm -hmm. got class for yep. Fiddler on the Roof he beat at Ascot I just loved him at Ascot Fiddler on the Roof he might be another wobbler but when he went clear that down the running this guy just found another gear he's a future national horse I think and Henry Day's got his horse in good form he wants softer ground I think what Fortescue, Fortescue. it's not going to be it's not going to be like a road is it on the on the melling he, he likes it he likes it deep mm, I think it'll be fine for him I think it'll be fine he's going to run a big race he's a massive prize anyway like I say it might just need it again on Saturday I don't know, but I think he is. There's another good pot in him. There's a peak pot in him, and I, this is one of the things I love about the jump season. He's staying handicap chases. You can follow your horses, can't you? Oh yeah. You know. Anyway, so I'm Team Fortescue in the Beecher. That's your Saturday races. Will he be wobbling or not? A reminder out then for you, if you're looking at this show and thinking, "What on earth are they all on about?" Do go and download our app. It just got better. There it is on the screen, look, exclusive content with the biggest names. Oh, they're all there. Robway's in there, believe it or not. Probably might even see Pat every now and then. Kills, there he is. You can get all the Saturday Sizzlers. You can basically get absolutely everything. All the form is there for you. You can download it on the Google Play Store or the App Store itself. Right, shall we move on to Sunday, gentlemen? Because this is one of the great weekends, isn't it? They move around these fixtures a little bit. I, I'm old enough to remember when the Royal Bond used to be on the old Hennessy weekend. Mm -hmm. You'd get the Irish coming over on the Saturday, the fans, and then they'd be telling you what's going to win the Drimmore et al. And it's fair to say this card on Sunday is not going to disappoint. We see the return of the Queen, Honeysuckle. I mean, this is perfect, isn't it? Constitution Hill, who of course won on this weekend last year, the Maiden Hurdle, by the way. 
he's come out now, shown his stuff. Just a week later, we don't even have to wait to see what she's going to do in Hatton's Grace. But before that, a small matter of potential future champion earners in the Royal Bond. The Royal Bond, and uh, you look at the form figures these horses, and you think, wow, you know, this is a deep old race. There's none of this avoiding each other, as Gordon Elliott alluded to earlier. And you're going to know where you stand when you take these good horses on. You might say, OK, right, we're not grade one standard. We'll have to go down the handicap route if we have Cheltenham aspirations. But the market is going to be dominated by Champ Kylie of Willie Mullins and Marine National of Barry Connell. Um, Marine National unbeaten three from three, two bumpers, look pretty good. Trainer got a high reputation for, uh, about the horse. One OK on Hurdle's um, debut. The time wasn't all that. And the manner of victory was left you a little bit... Mm, OK, I'd rather see it again. Yeah. Well, they did say well, we're going to next run in the Royal Bond and then you'll find out. So there they are, they're turning up. But you look at Champ Kylie's level of form. Oh. He won a grade three last time from Brazil, who then came out and beat Phil Dor. So yeah. that's pretty high ranking on form. On that decent Tipperary card, it is good it is Yeah, good and you look at them on balance and they're all at level weights apart from Ashro Diamond who gets the mayor's allowance. Champ Kylie has, has achieved more than anything else in the race yeah. at this stage, purely... How many of these could have beaten Brazil? Well, maybe Marine National could do, but we don't know that yet. So yeah. I think Champ Kylie, Willie Mullins, worthy favourite, tough to beat. Interesting, isn't it? Because this is where we level up what the Irish and the Anglo challenges got, yeah. basically. We'll get to that because the Drim Moore, I think, is going to sway us one way or another on, on that sphere for sure. Um, we've seen Omez Allen come out and the likes of that. We've seen, you know, some, some decent two mile jet power, things like that that we've seen. Uh, this, of course, is grade one time over there. It's a decent field. Mullins, unsurprisingly, throwing some darts at the board. And just a quick word about these sort of races. They are, if you come third or fourth, this is what you want to be looking at down the line for your county hurdles, isn't it? And your mm. Betfair hurdles and your, you know, your Martin Pipe conditionals and stuff. This is a race you cannot miss. No, yeah, this is obviously a race that last year was a bit of a low point for me. I was, I was wondering whether I should go there with you because or not. Because, of course, my mate Mozzie got caught on the line. Oh, um, he never recovered, did he? And you he, or him? He's been a bit disappointing, hasn't he, since? Anyway, um, I got the feeling with Champ Kylie that he wasn't one of Willie Mullins' absolute superstars, having seen him win those graded races before. Yeah. However... As Pat said, the form has worked out quite he's well. He's got to be five, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So you can't ignore him. And he is, of course, trained by Mullins, who farms these sorts of races. He's by far the most likely winner. He won it with a mare last year, of course, at 12 to 1 mm. Sanctuary. Do you remember? Astro Diamond is quite interesting. Marine National, you know, as, as Pat says, unbeaten. He's the sort of sexy unknown one, isn't he? But on form, he, he's, you he's just not get there the yet. feeling there's a few back in that Mullins camp who are a little bit better than Champ Keeley, but Champ Keeley mm. might still win it. Does Mullins run his best two miler in, in this race? Well, he has uh, done before, has he? Not he run? has. Hurricane Fly won it going way back. Yeah, yeah. But the, I was going to say, actually, historically, the race needs a bit of a boost. Envoy Allen. It sticks out like a sore thumb now amongst mm. the recent winners, you know, uh, yeah. Ab Abacadabra sources like that. Yeah. Uh, not quite the top notches that we were used to in the Royal Bond. It is, so it, we it, thinking it's maybe there isn't one there. Become uh, Willie doesn't mind waiting, does he? No. Uh, you know, he's happy to just wait and wait. He can wait. run his best two miler at <laughs> Leperstown at Christmas meeting. In, in a maiden, maiden herd or yeah. at Leperstown yeah. at Christmas, you're yeah. going to see his best. Yeah. That's yeah. when he always brings them out. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. Of course, we touched on it earlier on in the show. You've got Vasil Vega makes his hurling debut this weekend. He's That's probably it, isn't it? He's presumably the, your, your grade one novice hurdler. He'd go to the future champions novice, you would imagine, at Leperstown afterwards, wouldn't he? And he's the one. He's the one everyone's hoping for. Mm. Yeah. Multi's quaking everywhere if this <laughs> one goes down like a blue tart. Yeah, yeah. We all want him to be as good as he looks on, in the bumper form, and he probably will win this weekend. And he'll take his unbeaten record to Leperstown over Christmas. Yeah, this is on Saturday, of course. So yeah. uh, I'll take a chance... On Marine National going close, I think, because I think he, I think he just, he hasn't been extended yet. And while I like Champ Kylie, six-year-old, seven-year-old next year, he's got to be really good. And I'm not sure he's really good. I think he's, he's very good, but I'm not sure he's top-notch good. Anyway, that'll do. Now let's go to potentially one of the best Dream Wars I've seen in a long, long time. That comes up next. The question is, Pat, how far? How far? Not too far, Davy, for three-stripe life. Will he win? Of course he wins. 
This is the next. This is the second coming, man. This is my horse to follow. I'm just let. I'm just going to get out of the way. Jet Parrot's already gone and done the business. You saw the big jump off. Yeah. Well, three stroke lights come out. Not at odds. That, you know, to be. Able to, yeah. This is your time, people. Well, three stroke life. Very good novice hurdler. Ran very well at Cheltenham, didn't he? He was very good novice hurdler. Pat, he won Grade One. You know what I mean? He's top notch. Yeah, yeah. They were just running him over the wrong trip. That's right. And and he impressed on his, on his chasing debut. I'll give you that. Mighty Potter's talented as well. This this is a hard he old race. He can't cannot beat three strike life, well, Mighty Potter. But the interesting horse is Banbridge. I think we were all super impressed with him at Cheltenham over two miles. And I was he beat Tommy's Oscar, who then of course we, you know, they've basically gone abort fences afterwards. He beat Tommy's Oscar very very well though, didn't he? And I was chatting to Joseph O'Brien at Newbury on Saturday. He had a runner in the big race. And I was asking him about Banbridge, and he says, "Oh, he, he runs in the in the Drinmore over the two and but a half." But why? And I was saying, "How impressed were you with John Bon?" And I got the impression from him that he'd rather not take on John Bon yeah. over two miles. And so, let's see what we got over two and a half. And he may well be in with a winning chance on yeah. Sunday. I actually think well, his form is solid enough over two and a half. You know, if if you, how do you want to go? Do you want to take on John Bon in potentially a seven runner Arkle? Or move up to the Turners and take on not not as good as John Bonds, but three or four very good ones. Ducking and diving, <laughs> more and ducking and diving. Ducking and diving, <laughs> unbelievable. But, like it's <laughs> but but I was impressed with Banbridge at Cheltenham, and the extra step up and trip's not going to be a bother to me. Three stroke love, yeah, very solid. Mighty Potter, very good. Another very good race, and another one you just got to play and record. And those that finish fourth and fifth. They're your handicappers for the, uh, the, uh, the festival. Very much so, going all right out to the Ultima, to the Kimmy, or whatever yeah, you want. Yeah. These are unmissable races. And I'm sure a lot of them in there have got further handicap targets down the line. This wins on Sunday, right? This wins. Yes. <laughs> Three stripe life. Yeah. Now, this is, this is the thing. Now, we have to refer to my power rankings here. Why not? For the novice chasers. Why not? Because Banbridge is actually my number one ranked chaser. And Free Stripe Life is my number two ranked chaser. So we have the number one and number two ranked Can novice chasers. Can we please all agree that the Irish are way ahead on the novice chasers? It looks bar that John way. Bon at the minute. Right now, it looks yeah, that way. Doesn't they it? are. I mean, mm. fabulous as much as we love him and time. time mm. I mean, that's what we've got. We are in trouble. Yeah, yeah they, they wouldn't be favourite, would they? No. Of course, Nichols has got others to run and that, and we've got the Corto Star still to come. But um, mm, The key, yeah. of course, here is that although Banbridge is my number one ranked, He's had more runs over fences than um, Free Stripe Life. Are you, are you already mentally preparing? So my, this is the point we're making earlier with Constitution Hill, is that although Banbridge has achieved more at this stage of his career, uh, Free Stripe Life has achieved more after one run. So he's got the trajectory where he could go and leap above Banbridge, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Three stripe life. Oh, he's an absolute monstrous beauty of this world. Uh, right, Pat. Let's go on to another monstrous beauty. It is the beauty of them all, of course. The dual champion hurdle winner, the unbeaten honeysuckle, comes out. Now we're all expecting it to win, right, guys? Now, like I said, isn't it marvellous that she comes out a week later? Kenny Alexander spoke to us in the week, of course, and said. You've well all overreacted here. Speaking to some jots last weekend as well as it was all going on, going, what price has Honeysuckle gone out to for the champion hurdle? Yeah, she's around about five to one. Um, five to one? Yeah, and she's about three on on Sunday. Collective groan amongst the bookmaking industry when there was the dead eight declared for this race. So, <laughs> Yes, 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 let's find one. Um, let's thief it up. But Honeysuckle, yeah, she 16 out of 16, gets the seven pound mayor's allowance. I've probably been against her in 10 of the 16 wins. Have you? This yeah. is a project, thankfully, I've been on. Yeah, and... Um, I always get them right. I actually think she's got her hardest task this Sunday, taking on Classical Dream, who at these revised weights is only rated £2 inferior. Very talented horse when fresh, Classical Dream. Now, Classical Very Dream, he, he won the Supreme at Cheltenham. I know you have to go back a few years. He's a top-class horse. He's never run against Honeysuckle. He's one of Willie Mullins' few aeroplanes that hasn't taken her on yet he's going to put it up to her because he's he, he's form over further sunday's the day she loses the unbeaten tag you, I think you, I, you're taking her on yeah you're and pressing I'm not, the button i'm not an each way thief on occasions maybe but i think classical dream i think he'll serve it up to her and i think he can out stay her Wow, sometimes I come on and I say with all the big calls <laughs> on all the big races, I think you've just got one. Finally, we've got one. Uh, so that he's uh, 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 follow in, please, please. How, how this task so far? I'm, I'm stunned. Yeah, I am stunned. Um, oh, 
you know what I think about Honeysuckle. I think most people know what I think about her. I think she's very, very good, but I don't think she's an outstanding horse for all that she's won 16. Yeah, we, don't need to be, we don't need to be going there, <laughs> yeah. do we? We and, know about this. It's a, the mayor's allowance. And there's one champion hurdles and whatever. So I always think that she's beaten. Five to one for the I champion hurdles. I always think so. Yeah, but she will be nine. Yeah, and there's two two horses out there at the moment who, who I think are better than her. Not just one, Constitution Hill and State Man. Yeah. Who I think is very good as well. You got so, the stick for that, didn't you? Well, he's only five, isn't he? Constitution Hill's five. Anyway, this race here, I mean, she should win again, shouldn't she? And make it 17 out of 17 because there's just it's no state man and no Constitution Hill. Classical either. Dream, I agree, is a he's a rock and roller when he's fresh. I yep. think if they've not gone to the Galmoy, you know, he, he could have he could have very easily kept going up that hill at Jones. He's, he's a right horse when he's she, fresh. She's probably at some point in this race gonna look like she's gonna get beaten and we're all gonna go off. You know, mm. she's finally oh, beaten so and, exciting, and she's going to pull it out the fire. Could like she, she go does. back to the mayor's hurdle? A lot of people were like going mad at us when we suggested that the possibility of it. Oh, I hope not. Well, we, we all hope not. Come on, she's got to have a, we've got to see the match up, and we could oh, it happen got at to Christmas. See the match. Yeah. But it's it, not happen at Cheltenham. Mad, isn't it? If she think? gets beat en route to Cheltenham, you just the old adage: never be afraid of one. It might be one and a half by then. Yeah. State manager. Well, you're certainly not afraid of the greatest mayor potentially a lot of people think they've ever seen. Pat Cooney <laughs> is saying this is the weekend. The bubble is burst on the suckle. All right, but you're with her. Just I expect her to win. I think she, I think she'll win, but I don't think she'll do it impressively. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what Classical Dream does, and if there's an each way price, dare I say, I might be having a go at her as well. There is your Sunday sizzler. Ooh, what a beauty it is! All right, <coughs> what a show it's been so far. Can we top and tail it with some a weekend winners for you? The most important selections here on the panel, and I'm. Do you know what? I'm going to give you the floor because you got in before me, so I had to give it to you. But yep. I was going to go on yours. Yeah, 3.15 at Aintree, Harbour Lake. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, big improver, I think, we're going to see. Um, he obviously was very impressive when he won at Market Raisin last season, over two and a half. He come back this year, really strongly run Greatwood, and he stays on nicely And with the lack third. of flights, didn't help him either, did they? No, that wouldn't have suited yeah. him. Back up to two mile four, I agree, this yeah, is a winning machine. Yeah, right up to two and a half miles, yes. really suit him. He'll come on for that first round. And there'll be a price, because walking on the air comes back in holes yeah. like that, don't they? So, walking on air, yeah. yeah. The jury's out on walking well, on look, air. Well, we'll see, but Harbour Lake, we'll we agree, all agree. He's got I'm on Harbour Lake big time. Yeah. I think this is, a, this is an NB for me and Pat as well. But you're going to Sandown for some, I mean, it's horses for courses again, isn't it? Yeah, 330 for me, the, the lucky last. Daisha Arbor of uh, the Hobbs theme had four runs at Sandown, two wins, two seconds, got beat a nose and a head in the other two. He runs off 142, got beat a nose in this race last year. That's in the London Nash, isn't it? The London National. And then in February, off the same mark, he got beat ahead by Lee Milos, who came out and won the big feature race at New York. Yeah, it's all week. there, Pat. So you've got your Sandown form, the collateral form, it's all there for a mighty run from him. And that ain't tree hurdle we came back and we saw, of course, the place horse is, it was a very good race. Yeah, it? And it's, yeah. it's a proper prep race, that. Yeah, so. All right, uh, uh, because I've had to move the goalpost slightly, I'm going to go for an Annie Murphy in the first at ain't tree. And Strong Glance, it's called. Uh, ran second in the bumper at Cheltenham, which is working out extremely well, having one on his debut. He won at Utoxeter, uh, very prohibitive odds. What I love about this horse, and I've spoken to people that, that are quite close to him, he just keeps finding. He's quite a lazy horse. There's a couple in there that are going to give us a surprise. Pleasant man of Paul Nichols, uh, terrible in the uh, Adonis when we first saw him. Aintree, the home straight is going to really, really suit him. I think he can take it out. I think this is a Cheltenham horse. There you go, then. That's your weekend treble here on What A Shout. Well, sadly, and you know what? It is sad. We've had a great time on this week's What A Shout. It's time to sign off, guys. That was brilliant. Johnny Burke was superb. I like the great racing this weekend. Pat, thanks for coming down again. Yeah, really enjoyed it and looking forward to a wonderful weekend. Not just Saturday, but Sunday as well. And this is how it's going to be from here on in. Yeah, we'll see you again before Christmas. Uh, hopefully next week uh, we sponsor at Doncaster on next Saturday so um, yeah I'm looking forward to that as well lovely G-Rod happy days yeah great to be back isn't it um, looking forward to the weekend's action should be a great weekend yeah great stuff great to have you with us as well don't forget keep your naps and all your comments coming in below how good was Johnny Burke like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube anything on Facebook we look on there as well don't worry and hashtag all those clips out there what a shout don't forget of course to gamble responsibly Saturday and Sunday, so many out there. Do pick your targets wisely, guys. Don't chase. And, of course, do remember to download the free Racing Post app. You can do that on the Google Play Store or the App Store itself. From myself, Dave Orton, all the sports out there, enjoy it.